Do I sound nice, Alex? Beautiful. Okay, cool. Tonight on Double Hammer. Don't change the screens. You're right where you need to be. You're watching Below the Belt's Double Hammer. Tonight, with three EPs released in the past year, quickly getting them a foothold in the hardcore community. They're boasting chain, noise, and spitting vitriol. Prepare yourselves for Pip Walk. <laughs> I'm Dan, I play guitar. I'm Paul, I do vocals. 
I'm Nat, I play guitar. I'm Connor, I play bass. I'm Jay, I play drums. We all kind of know each other from different places. I've known Paul for coming on 10 years or so just from the like, like South Bristol and South Wales hardcore scenes. Um, I've known Jamie for similar amount of time from similar scenes around Bristol. Uh, me and Connor went to uni together six, seven years ago, something like that. Which we only found out. Today. Which we only realised today, actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've, we've actually known each other for years, but... Yeah, we've kind of been hanging out a lot in, in more kind of emo scenes in Bristol recently. And uh, Nats was a really good friend with actually our old bassist. Um, so she's m known all of us a bit more recently, kind of since we started the band. Sweet. And the band, like, it hasn't sort of just been a, a start a band and it's in two weeks it's going. Because you started writing material back in 2016, right? 2017. 2017. Yeah. Um, and... Paul, you came on in 2021, was it? Yeah, uh, basically, Dad had the demos for, for our first EP for a long time, and then um, he contacted me during COVID, and well, when everything was still opening up, and I wanted to um, be in the band again, and he sent me some of them, I wrote pretty much all the lyrics to it in about a month. It definitely does seem since the pandemic, it's just the whole genre and sub-genres around that have just like blown up more than ever. Mm. It's probably, it, it, I think it is largely down to what Paul mentioned, just like, I don't know, having that taken away from you, like that sense of enjoying music, like live music. It's I like don't know, I think once it's like, it, it gave people like a lot of time to reevaluate what like was important to them and all that. Mm. And I think once things like got back to normal per se, uh, yeah, people are just really excited to get back into it. I think. Yeah, I think more people have got into the scene as well though, because mm. yeah, you, you know, like, You've had like Turnstile playing Saturday Night Live and then going to the Grammys and then you've had this kind of explosion of exposure on social media for say like bands like Speed who mm. started in the during the, the pandemic couldn't really play any shows but because their music videos blew up like on YouTube and all over Instagram and everything by the time it came to them playing shows so many people were more aware of it mm. people who hadn't really got been involved in hardcore before were now aware of it and there's so many more people coming into the scene people go oh, okay well what bands are doing this where i live mm, what's yeah. going on in my local <clears throat> scene and my local venues and ha hardcore is built on that yeah yeah totally hardcore especially is one of the genres which like is fun to listen to but holy shit to experience it is 10 times better what i noticed in terms of genres was that um sort of these sub genres which sort of would have normally had a a bit of a band cap community around them um suddenly exploded because people had more time to sort of delve so things like uh, Egg Punk, like Prison Affair, and stuff like that, and like GT, and like Chain Punk, and you can't always call yourself Egg Fried Chain. Well, how, what, it's, uh... <laughs> there's, there's actually quite a lot of nuance to this. So the, the difficulty oh, okay. with the Egg Chain thing is that defining Egg Punk is quite easy because it's just punk bands who are influenced by Devo. But, <laughs> but no one actually really knows what Chain Punk is, and there's a whole bunch of different... Like, people have got all sorts of different opinions. Like, I've seen uh, egg chain spectrums that place bib at uh, hard one end, hard the other, or somewhere in the middle, for example. But I think a lot of the bands that we're influenced by come from that more kind of egg realm, but then we're, we're playing things in a, in a much harder, mm -hmm. kind of more aggressive aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of influence from, like, bib, uh, gag, gel... Um, Spy. I'm I'm influenced per, like especially with the the early demos. I take a lot of influence from the Southeast Asian punk scene. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of bands out there who are doing the the kind of bib thing, a lot of silly walkable riffs and a lot of like effects on the vocals and stuff. Mm. Um, unsubs, odd, uh, loads of bands like that. The thing I always say is, it's as much as it's nice how well we've been doing. What's even nicer is that we're not the only band. Mm. There's a whole bunch, we've got loads of mates who've been starting bands and they've all been doing really well as well. The whole South, West scene, uh, South Wales scene in Cardiff and Newport has been exploding. Mm. Uh, there's a really good scene coming out of Plymouth at the moment, um, mostly spearheaded by Crew Cuts Records. Uh, so it's just really nice to be part of this bigger scene and everyone's doing this more mm. kind of leaning towards this more chain style at the moment.
After the pandemic, and you worked in the NHS at the time, right? Yeah, I still do. Yeah. Um, nice, cool. What do you do in the NHS? Uh, I work as a uh, decontamination uh, technician in a endoscopy, um, which is basically me decontaminating the uh, cameras that are used it within those procedures. I'm not going to tell you where they go. <laughs> nice, nice. And I think we can use our imagination. <laughs> Wicked. So you you were you were working there throughout the pandemic, which is obviously a very yeah. rough time. There's obviously been various strikes and sense of people working in the NHS not really being treated that fairly for the service that they provide um, at the time. How's that expressed in your music? I guess it's kind of expressed in a way where I, I tried to, in, in that time period and with the lyrics that I, I wrote for The Chain of Infection, I kind of wanted to be all encompassing with that time period. So everything that the um, healthcare workers were going, were going through and pretty much most all the country as well. Just flipping comments at the Prime Minister at the time was making about um, letting the body's part higher and things like that really affected me. It was a thing where um, I had to kind of try and get my thoughts across it in in the hope that somebody would kind of hear what I, what I was saying. Or, mm-hmm. um, which I, I've had people actually within the NHS um, who I know closely come come to me and be like, you've actually really captured the time period of that it, it was in, which is a really cool feeling to have. Yeah, like a resonance. It definitely is resonating because um, since you released in 2023 your three EPs, um, they've they've done really really well. Um, what was that? Because you've you've been involved in hardcore music to some degree since you were 17. What was that like in the pandemic when you'd go into the NHS and it'd all be uh, a bit fire and brimstone, and coming back then and also being a, a punk? Um, it was kind of a little bit of a weird time because um, obviously like. Hardcore and punk music are generally known for their um, live interactions and interactions at gigs. Um, in terms of like a live setting and also just as a social setting for me, it, it was like I started going to these sh- shows and made my friends that I still really know really well today as a result of them. And to have that kind of taken away with um, the pandemic and stuff, is, and then that, since everything's opened up, it's like nothing had ever stopped really. And it's kind of mm. better than ever. Especially in Bristol, where um, I used to put on a lot of gigs prior to the pandemic, where like um, it was a struggle to try and get people to come to them or to be interested in, in the gigs I was putting on. And now, like, it seems to be like every gig in Bristol that I either hear about that people are going to or that I want attend myself, that I've pretty much sold out um, wow. yeah, like, yeah. Each, each, each time, which is a really cool thing. It definitely does seem since the pandemic, it's just the whole genre and subgenres around that have just like blown up more than ever. Mm. It's probably, it, it, I think it is largely down to what Paul mentioned, just like. I don't know, having that taken away from you, like that sense of enjoying music, like live music. It's like, I, don't know, I think once it's like, it, it gave people like a lot of time to reevaluate what like was important to them and all that. Mm. And I think once things like got back to normal per se, uh, yeah, people are just really excited to get back into it, I think. It's also like a sense of community as well. I yeah. think that's also taken away a little bit within the, within the pandemic also. Nice, yeah. 2023 that was like a very kind of big year you had your first sort of uh the trio of releases there um that have like i said earlier critically received really really well and the the sound is just fucking amazing um but 2023 was a big year for you because you doubled your discography to 140 uh releases i've read your facebook yeah (laughs) (laughs) um so what changed in your environment where you could double your output in the space of 11 months um, it was just good timing for the most part. I've I've got like I had a, nearly ten years worth of kind of unfinished projects uh, just on a hard drive, mm. and I kind of realised 
uh, I was looking through stuff towards the end of 2022 and I realised that if if I just stopped trying to start new projects as I always do and just finished all of the stuff that I'd already started, I had a good chance of, of doubling it and I just mm. thought that would be a cool goal to set myself. So um, yeah, I just kind of went back and finished as many of those projects as I could. Um, I was also quite lucky to be asked to to be involved in a couple of albums, um, so that kind of bumped up the, the song count quite heavily. Cool. Uh, so that was one goal smash. What's the next goal? you want to get that up to 280? Oh, I'm not doubling it again. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite stressful towards the end. You've got something in the, in, the, in the works at the minute, right? To go sort of go overseas and play? Yeah, <laughs> we've still got some details to finalise, uh, but we're hoping to, to do a tour later this year. Um, it will be kind of uh, autumn, winter that uh, around September time. Um, yeah, like I say, as as nothing's kind of that actually confirmed yet. Nice. But so, it's, it should be quite a big opportunity for us. And, uh, and uh, playing Outbreak in June and then going on to do this tour, I think it'll be a, a really nice follow on and a really good way to keep up that momentum. I think if we're lucky, we could play to... Up- up to one and a half, two thousand people at Outbreak. Uh, Even in a worst case scenario, I think it's going to be the biggest crowd we've played in front of. Cool. So, what have you got, uh, finally, for uh, anything to say to people who are sort of thinking about starting bands? People in, uh, you know, Bristol, but further afield, southwest. Just people who aren't from somewhere like London, where it's musicals kind of on your doorstep. You know. Coming from the perspective of someone who who has released a, a ton of music on across a ton of different projects, a lot of them solo projects, you just if you want to do it, you've just got to do it. Mm-hmm. You've got to not be hung up about uh, doing a band quote unquote properly mm. and having like a full lineup and um, you know like I've, I've got a ton of mates who started bands as a two piece, you know, one person doing guitar and vocals and one person doing drums or something like that and you've just got to work with what you've got and just get stuff down. And there's so many tools out there these days that, you know, if you can't play drums, you can download some stuff. Uh, Pirate Bay is still going strong. Um, (laughs) And, you know, you can just program some drums on a track. Um, You can program bass, keyboards, like all sorts of stuff. You you know, you don't need to have uh, any kind of fancy setup to start recording stuff. Nice, cool. And come to local shows as well. Because you'll yeah. meet yeah. people, make mm-hmm. friends. Yeah, 100%. Like, all of our friends are like, you know, so many bands are popping up, like we said earlier, like that are just like mates of ours that have been coming to shows, thinking of starting a band, and then they've seen like us do it, or like, other bands do it, and they get inspired, or they meet people through the gigs and the scene. It's like, there's like a support network there, like mm-hmm. there, like we all want to see yeah. more bands, more music, and more like diverse scene like than we can, like... I think yeah, showing up and being part of that community is definitely the essential. Uh, uh, yeah, essential to yeah. getting in and involved. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very, very much for coming down. Thank you. Sure, everyone was going to love it. Cool. Yeah.